why South Indian food destroys North Indian food. Wow, this is a hot topic. South versus North, obviously a common thing, but the street food in particular, what's different? Maybe we'll find out in this video. Thank you, Mr. Sonny. Thank you so much. We react to a lot of your videos. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Cause we didn't want to learn about foods to eat in India. Yeah, and we go to these countries. He went to the Spiral Buffet and we went there too. Yeah, we went there first though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're going to check this out. I think worldwide and at least in the U.S., North Indian food is wide, is much more like widely accessible for us, especially like Punjabi food and stuff like that. For sure. Every place we'd go to in the U.S. would be North Indian food, even if it's from owned by South Indians. They or would, Nepali or yeah, Pakistani. They would serve North Indian food. So... We, the only place we've been in India is the South, and we've eaten South Indian food in Karnataka. Those vlogs are on our travel vlog channel if you want to check that out. Link in the description and the pinned comment below. Some very local foods to the different cities we went to. Uh, and we're actually going to be going back to South India in a few months here, so be ready for that over on that channel. And we're going to be eating all the foods. Lots of stuff to check out. You can uh, just watch those old vlogs in the meantime. Right there. And expect some epic ones in the future. Let's do this. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Here we go. In this video, I'll be showing you five reasons why South Indian food absolutely destroys North Indian food. But first, let's back up. It's a bold up. statement. Absolutely destroys. Chennai. Should we go to Chennai? For those Let of you know. not living in India, you may be surprised to know that North Indian food is quite different from South Indian food. South Indian food is considered to be one of the most well-recognized cuisines around the world. Mm. Renowned for its crispy dosas, coconut-infused curries, and an abundance of rice-based dishes. It's coming out of this giant rice cooker that would make any Asian lady in Korea jealous. But how have these flavors shaped the cuisine in Chennai, the capital of Tamil Nadu, in the southernmost state of India? Well, today, we're going to find out. From a pancake bursting with savory curry goodness, challenging Ooh. the best of any Waffle House menu. It became a iconic here. All the way to a biryani factory, churning out 15,000 pounds of rice every day. 15,000 pounds? Normally, 5,000 to 7,000 kgs of biryani. Particularly in Sundays, we are making 10,000 to 12,000 kgs. So get ready, because we're taking Jeez. a tour of the most iconic South Indian treasures. That looks kind of like the stuff we ate. Yeah, in Mangalore. It was like red like that. And we were like, was well, this going to be super spicy? And it was just amazing. It's delicious. Chennai. <laughs> In our journey with Chennai's favorite cheap breakfast dish, a donut that's stolen the hearts of Tamil Nadu's locals since its creation in 1951. A donut, you say? Oh. Healthy. Because it has protein. How can something deep fried be healthy? It's a, this is such an interesting concept to us Americans is taking breakfast food like a donut and then dipping it in curry. Yeah, the curry that's just uh, typically for American breakfast, you sort of you either go with something salty or you go with like something really sweet. And then to get a sweet i'm assuming it's sort of more I, sweet i would dough. assume so then you dip it in an indian curry or chutney of some sort That's which is spiced up yeah which is bursting with spiciness saltiness all the different spices of the masala it's it's definitely very different and we've gotten slightly more accustomed to that as we've lived in asia yeah. oh Introducing Medu Vada. This famous South Indian breakfast is crafted using one of India's most highly prized and expensive legumes. The legume known as black gram, exclusively grown in the southern part of India oh. and also northern Bangladesh and Nepal. But that is it and it oh. is very exclusive. To make this dish, start by blending the black gram soaked overnight into a thick batter. Next, add our seven spice ensemble. Why is ensemble, the black gram like pepper, white? Cumin, aromatic curry leaves, zesty a lot of spices. Chilies, red onions, a dash of salt, and a hint of pepper root. Mix everything well. Oh. Then take a blob of batter and with a little thumb magic, sculpt it into a donut shape before dropping it into the fryer. <laughs> That's funny. They 
thumb the donut shape instead of because donuts are usually just cut out. Yeah. That's interesting. It's all about the shape. This trick ensures our donuts cook up evenly, giving you that perfect crunch from the outside to the inside. Once they are perfectly golden brown, take them out and serve. Unlike its sugary cousin, this savory donut brings a savory. It's a flavor journey, a pilgrimage of pleasure, where legumes and spices collide into a spicy tango, unleashing a pepper and curry explosion. And in the texture department, it's a tag team effort, a crispy coat embracing delicious. a fluffy cloud-like center. Fun fact, Madhu means soft, while Vada is a type of Indian savory fritter. Okay. Nice cheap meal. Now, introducing an irresistible sweet sensation that steals the spotlight at every public holiday or wedding in Chennai. Get ready for a sugar rush, because this egg-based delight is not holding back. I'm not kidding. It packs a whopping 10 pounds of sugar. When will you guys believe me? This oh thing is going to be very, very sweet. Let's take a look. That's a mound. That's something also in India when they go sweet. And a lot of things are savory. Like a lot of like they put masala on fruits that we saw. When they go sweet, they go hard. My gosh. Uh, gulab jamun. It's sweet as nuts. Jalebi. Jalebi. so sweet. It's pretty, in pretty intense. But it's tasty. <laughs> Behold the Mata Mitai. This recipe emerged just over six decades ago, casting a spell on the taste buds of Tamil Nadu ever since. Oh. Now it's the star dessert at almost Looks like almost it looks like a mix between like a rice cake and a cornbread. Which is because it was just egg and sugar, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. That's interesting that it turns out like that. It's really shiny. Free local event. <laughs> First things first, crack a couple dozen eggs into a bowl. Yes, I Maybe said Maybe some spices dozen, in there too. Many Who knows? Gotta be something. He's very particular Next, with the, the crack. It's a thick dairy ingredient, somewhat similar to okay. dry ricotta cheese, made from dried oh, oh. whole milk or whole milk thickened on an iron pan. I kind of want to just Carefully eat it raw to see what it tastes like in the texture, like cookie dough that into the egg follow that with all the sugar you can find at indian costco here it was more than 10 pounds <laughs> while folding add the magical ingredient no not more sugar i'm talking about ghee also known as uh, clarified oh. butter that's ghee it kind of looks like baby food it does. Now place like a, a over the gas stove and using a hand blender, mix everything well until it gains a custard-like texture. Wow, okay. For the final step, glaze up a tray with a bit of ghee and pour in our eggy mixture. Bake everything for six hours and serve. Imagine Good. a smoky, creamy egg custard with a seriously sugary kick. Blame it on the ghee or the irresponsible volume of sugar. But despite <laughs> its simplicity, this treat is bursting with rich, intricate flavors that'll leave you craving for more. I'm assuming it's six dollars for like a whole tray. Yeah, that would be a lot for a slice. In <laughs> That'd be a lot in the U.S. for just that slice. Chennai, a massive coastal hotspot in India. It boasts a cuisine that's heavily influenced by its that's oceanic surroundings. Rice. Seafood reigns supreme here, served oh. up in countless delicious ways. But the seafood that's topping the charts? The legendary fish fry. Seriously, it's everywhere. Say hello to the palm frit fish fry, known locally as Vaval Min Varuval. This spicy, shallow fried delight has that magical power to turn everyone into a die-hard seafood enthusiast. Even that one cousin with a seafood allergy would give it all up to try this. You'll oh. see why as we get to the cooking lady's secret steps.
First, she carefully washes the pomfret fish, then scores its entire body using the traditional boti knife. Next up, the spice game begins. She adds salt, turmeric powder, red chili powder, and fenugreek powder. You it's not a secret anymore. Was done. Well, you thought wrong. After a few splashes of water, she adds a blend of ginger, turmeric, and fish masala. Mix it up for those flavors to mingle and work their magic. So Finally, it's prime time. 15 to 20 minutes till it's crispy to the bones. Oh. This dish, it's the epitome of comfort food in Tamil Nadu. The pomfret fish, white, flaky, Yum. and oh so tender. After a solid 20 minutes in that oil, it's crispy on the outside and fall off the bone soft on the inside. Simple, yet delicious. And now, your cousin with a seafood allergy is dead. No! <laughs> no. Three bucks for that whole fish. That's pretty Get good. Get ready to dive into the ultimate. That looks like the place in Mangalore we went for the Mangalore and like breakfast. We got like a whole buffet of yeah. breakfast foods. It was massive and cheap also. Very cheap. Dosa experience. We're talking a dosa stuffed to the brim with juicy mutton curry. An egg surprise and all of it topped with even more spiced drenched mutton. Wow. This, my friends, could very well be the heavyweight champion of meaty dosas. Oh my god. It looks really good. Simakal Konarka Days is a restaurant which is originated in Madurai in uh, Simakal, around 1943. After uh, 20 years of time, 1963, around Kari Dosa specific dish has been invented. It is invented by Mr. Manikam Konar. His father, Mr. Sundram Konar, founded Kari uh, Konarka Day. And so from then, uh, almost eight years, it has been uh, here. From that time, uh, it, uh, it has started the story of Kari Dosa. <laughs> Oh. Let's dive into Chennai's culinary wonders. Getting you pumped for the curries. food. But why settle for one or the other when there's a dish that masters both? Meet the mutton curry dosa, one of the city's most magical so food creations. So heavy. That's gotta Step be so one, good. Spread oh, yeah. Dosa batter on the hot tawa. Step two, top it with a dose of rich mutton brain gravy. Brain gravy. Step three, crack an egg right on top and mix it all together to create a fatal 15 car pile up of flavor in your mouth. Step four, enter the star ingredient, mutton suka. If it came from a cow, we would call it brisket. But this is intensely seasoned mm. oh. chest meat that's been cooked low and slow. Flip it, let that meat caramelize, and you've got yourself a dosa fit for royalty. And then serve it with some <laughs> curry as well. This dish is experienced in layers. First, a crispy, nearly violently seasoned mutton meat kicking off the flavor parade, followed by a creamy curry mixed with egg at the heart of it all. And to seal the deal, the final layer, a warm, slightly crispy dose of batter that ties everything together. It's so interesting. It's like taking what you would do before with like a curry and a bread, like a dosa, and then you'd grab it and then put it in the curry. But instead, you just slap it on and cook it together why oh, not yeah why not before we put an end to this onslaught of south india's culinary excellence oh, let's shine a spotlight on the ingredient reigning supreme not just here but across all of india i'm talking about rice basmati rice and if there's a dish that's the ultimate rice ambassador is biryani for our final escapade we're making a pit stop at a biryani factory where they're churning out a mind-blowing 11 to 15 000 pounds of biryani each day that's Crazy. almost enough biryani to feed your mom wow our biryani style is chennai style uh, muslim wedding biryani biryani was popular by muslims because they only brought it to the Tamil customs by the wedding biryani. They know about the cooking timing and uh, dumb biryani. Totally thought the only the pizza rolls? Yeah. <laughs> is it not pizza rolls? <laughs> and, uh, it's the same packaging as pizza rolls. <laughs> We got that biryani, but then they put like a non cover on top of it. And it was in like a clay pot. I guess that one's kind of in a clay. Yeah, it was like as well. very similar to that. But then they just put like bread over it. When, when they put it into the oven, they cooked like the bread on top. And then we were like, weren't supposed to eat it. Why won't you eat the bread? It was yummy. That's good. Biryani is probably one of the first dishes that comes to mind when you mention Indian cuisine. But did you know there are over 70 different varieties of biryani? Here, they make it in the dumb style. Then 
and that is dum spelled d-u-m this style originated from the arabic peninsula and it's more similar to a plum than other classic biryanis instead of layering in the ingredients as usual they mix everything together in a huge pot start by frying up red onions with huge might be an understatement cauldron. once they're golden add ginger garlic paste, and diced tomatoes look at that for seasoning add salt turmeric powder and red chili powder and the spoon. <laughs> yeah. It's like a shovel. While they're sweating. Now it's time for the protein. Here, they like to wash the chicken thighs, season them with turmeric powder, then drop them in the main cauldron, followed by water and fresh coriander leaves. Finally, add the par-cooked rice and let it boil for another 45 minutes to complete the dish. Oh, yeah. When the cooking is finally complete and the lid is removed, you'll be greeted by something glorious. Despite its colossal production, this biryani is on a whole different level. Every grain of rice is infused with those aromatic spices, making each bite an absolutely blissful experience. Now that we've gone through the most iconic dishes in Chennai, showing off the amazing variety South India has to offer, it's time for us to pick our favorite. Was it the crispy medu vada, the eggy mutta mitai, the flavor-packed mutton curry dosa, the legendary fish fry, or the mouth-watering biryani? What is it? Today, All of the them. biryani stole the show for me. Uh. The mastery of crafting such delectable food on a grand scale and then serving thousands with affordable, high-quality dishes, well, that is just plain old worthy of my respect. So how about you? Which one of these Chennai classics would you try for yourself? Let me know downstairs All of them? in the comments below. I want to try that and egg one. more indulgent feasts for your one. senses, oh. be sure to subscribe to Best Ever Food India. Oh. Thanks. I want to eat that biryani. That biryani looks mad good. He said it's not so spicy, too. That's good for me. I can't handle spicy. Spice. We need to find the spiciest biryani in India and then have you eat a whole a bowl. challenge? Let's go. <laughs> All right, we're going to go. Guys, we're going to do, uh, let us know the spiciest food in India. Uh, and he will eat every single level from 20 the chilies to the top. And yeah, then at the end, you'll just be pounding the chilies. We'll mash it up into a chili smoothie and you can drink it. Another cool video full of South Indian food. It looks amazing. And we're planning to go there soon. So we're going to eat a lot of it. And give our, your opinion. Does South Indian food, street food, distress? Destroy North Indian. Put it in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out the Travel Vlog channel of our South India adventures, and we'll see you in the next one. See you in India. Bye.